because I'm a police officer. <sighs> what happened? These guys, they just they just can't stand women in gaming. What did they do to you? Uh, they leveled up. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Saladino. At this point, I know Stacey Henley and everybody else at The Gamer knows that what they're doing has nothing to do with social justice. There has to be a level of awareness. And I believe there is with Stacey Henley. I think that uh, this person is just clickbaity at this point. It's clear that these headlines are completely out of touch with reality. And they're framed in a way that feminists have been framing this sort of topic forever now, especially, you know, the sex negative ones or particularly the sex negative ones, the Anita Sarkeesians and whatnot. So you have this article, another stupid article by Stacey Henley complaining about sexy women and complaining about men liking sexy women, which is, again, absurd considering that Stacey Henley is actually a man who says he's a woman. So Stacey Henley is trans and... They are constantly writing these stupid ass articles, making these dumb complaints that is not connected with reality, like the Cami one, the Megan Fox one with Diablo. And so here's the latest. And there may have been more in between then, but I uh, heard about this one from Endymion TV. But anyway, stop using mods to make female characters prettier. Why would anybody listen to this? Like this is only speaking to people who care what men do when they play video games. Like this isn't a social issue. There isn't a crisis of men like attractive women. This is a crisis for who? For people like Stacey Henley who are trans? Like for fat women? I don't even believe that there are fat women out there. There are plenty of fat women, or thick women or whatever, who can get men. And the thing about these feminists, they act like, or they always say, we don't need men. When we put on makeup and wear dresses and all this stuff, we're not doing it for men. Yet they care so much about what men do when they are talking about fictional characters, they're playing video games, anime, whatever they like. It's a big concern for feminists, which is insane. And because the media frames it like it's a national crisis. And it's not. Men like attractive women. Women like attractive women. <laughs> Forget attractive men. Women like attractive women. But we have to have these stupid articles Stop using mods to make female characters pretty. Baldur's Gate 3 is the latest game to be beset by gamers deciding that every woman needs to be endlessly beautiful and always glamorous. If, okay, this is entertainment. I've already said this now. Men don't owe women validation. And this idea that because in entertainment, men want to see attractive women, especially the main characters like the possible love interests or the ones with the most lines and the ones you see a lot they're going to want them to be pretty not every character every female character needs to be pretty but this thing about deciding that every woman needs to be endlessly beautiful and always glamorous it's like the stupid miller light ad where it's like what did they do they put us in bikinis they didn't put you in bikinis and now that deciding that every woman needs to be endlessly beautiful and glamorous there's the they're the ones that men who are playing these games and modding these characters are paying attention to. And it's like, well, you need to pay attention to me. No, I don't. <sighs> By Stacey Henley. Oh, God. One of the strangest complaints I've seen in the history of video games is stop making mods. No, but anyway, one of the strangest complaints I've seen in the history of video games was when gamers were mad that Aloy had fuzz on her face. Not a beard. Not an unsightly cave woman model brow. Not the black prawns of an unwaxed top lip which surely at least some women in her society should have had, but regular peach fuzz. I don't even want, this is such a disingenuous first paragraph, but I don't want to hear anything about what the other women in Horizon Forbidden West should have had as far as, you know, what should have been like unattractive or realistic. Every woman in Horizon Forbidden West is ugly. Aloy looks better than she did in that first reveal, but pretty much every other woman is ugly. All right. Almost all human 
okay, and again, let me, before I get to this other stupid article, not article, before I get to this other paragraph, so this thing about gamers were mad about the fuzz on their face. The reason why, and this person knows this, Stacey Henley knows this, they weren't mad because it's like, ew, hair and a woman. It's like, why are you putting so much attention? You're going so far to be like realistic in making this character more unattractive by putting beach fuzz on her face. Like you're doing it on purpose. You're not doing it because this is realistic and you care about, you know, the portrayal in the game. You're doing this because people like Stacey Henley complain about portrayals of women in video games. Almost all humans have hair almost all over our bodies. These white, wispy hairs are near invisible until you get up close and see them at a certain light. It should have been praised as a commitment to photorealism. But instead, many gamers, apparently ignorant of basic biology, were enraged by it. It's rich for a trans woman to talk about being ignorant of basic biology, but whatever. It's deemed unacceptable for women in games not to be beautiful, as a recent swath of mods for games like Baldur's Gate have proven. It is unacceptable at this point, but the thing is, it's deemed to be unacceptable for women to be attractive by people like Stacey Henley. And gamers recognize this. We all know this. We see what's going down in Western entertainment. So, of course, we're going to call it out at every turn now. It's like you, there's no tolerance for it. <sighs> Within a few days of Baldur Ga Baldur's Gate 3 launching, a mod was made that claimed to make Lazel prettier. BG3 is being praised for its rich writing, character development, and branching storytelling, but some just can't lose themselves in narrative if the women don't look like supermodels. There's even a mod that makes Shadowheart prettier, despite the fact that she already looks like a supermodel. This is such a waste of time, but this is what I mean when I say it's clickbait. Because there's no, this is not news. There's no point to this. There's no social good that comes out of complaining about men like pretty characters and they make them even prettier. It offers up a strange standard that I'm not sure anyone can be happy with. It's a problem in itself that you can't experience Lyazel, that you can't experience Lyazel's story for what it is. But objectively, Lyazel is not a beautiful creature. Shadowheart, however, is a conventionally attractive woman. See, again, this thing of being concerned about, well, you only care about this character if they're attractive or not. You should care about the story. Again, this has nothing to do with you. I don't care that you're a feminist. I don't care that you're a trans woman. I don't care that you think men should care more about these characters than whether they're attractive or not. Or that they can't care about it unless the character is attractive. That has nothing to do with you. This is, again, fiction. This is entertainment. They don't have to care about this deep connection with these fictional characters. That they want them to look good. They want them to look good. You're not doing anything for women or anyone anywhere by writing these stupid articles. But anyway, Shadowheart, however, is a conventionally attractive woman. To look at her and instantly think of ways you can fine-tune her into the perfect woman shows you see not only video game characters but women as a whole as commodities. Here again, this is the only reason why they're able to make this complaint without being laughed out of the room. And it's, you know, it's, it's good that somebody like Stacey Henley, who's actually a man, makes these complaints because you could see how absurd it is, you know, to pretend that this is about, you take what people are doing with fictional video game characters and you pretend that it had somehow has real world application the thing is you call us who complain about this sort of thing incels so you don't think we have any power over women anyway in the real world so why do you care if we do see women as commodities that's why we're incels then if we can't have real life relationships with women oh well so be it we'll do it in video games but the thing is it's not about oh you treating real life women as commodities it's People like Stacey Henley and a lot of these ugly feminists care. They do care about what's considered attractive. This isn't about, well, you just see us as commodities. No, you don't see us as attractive. That's it. And again, with Stacey Henley, you just don't see Stacey Henley as a woman. It's just That's just the truth. This is just not a problem in Baldur's Gate 3. It's not a problem anywhere. Any game that involves significant interaction with female characters quickly devolves into build a bitch. And if you need a woman to meet impossible beauty standards in order to connect with them, it suggests these connections are only skin deep. I don't need, again, a trans woman telling me what's impossible beauty standards for an actual woman. And also, it doesn't matter if they are impossible beauty standards. Why are you trying to meet them? This is fiction. 
This is like saying men trying to make themselves like, like you would laugh at somebody who said, I'm going to be like Batman. That's an impossible standard for anyone. People think, oh, I can just get really strong. You could be like Batman. No, you can't. Batman's not just a regular strong guy. Batman could be Superman. So calm down. But anyway, if you need a woman to meet impossible beauty standards in order to connect with them, it suggests these connections only skin deep. Even if that's the case, so what? It has nothing to do with you. Who cares if your connection with a fictional character is only skin deep? You not like it's not your job to make gamers better people. It doesn't affect you either way. This is entertainment. Worrying about how they connect with these characters has again nothing to do with you. It doesn't affect society in any way. Mass Effect, Dragon Age, Cyberpunk 2077, and Tomb Raider are just a handful of examples. It goes back to the outrage around Aloy, where the game was criticized for being hyper realistic when it came to imperceptible hairs on the face. But Aloy and Laura Croft and dozens more video game women living in wild conditions are always shown without leg or armpit hair, despite the fact that they would definitely have some. Developers already make hundreds of decisions aimed at making women more attractive, and these are just taken as standard. Fuck off. Again, this is such a disingenuous argument. This is what I mean when I say that Henley is aware of what they're doing and that this is just clickbait. Because you can't be a reasonably intelligent person and make these arguments and feel that they should actually stick like this is a concern for people like developers shouldn't be sitting there thinking about well you know Stacey Henley is not going to like the fact that this character has perfect model features especially when again Aloy is built it was based on a fucking model <sighs> all right but anyway what does it say um yeah this thing about developers already making hundreds of decisions made it make it more no they don't they actually make decisions to make them unattractive. And even in the case of Baldur's Gate 3, one of the reasons why I'm not going to play it is the fact that they've only got a, a limited amount of preset faces. They don't give you a choice of the type of face and character you can create because they want to force you to create a character of their choosing. Because they're like, otherwise, you're just going to make the same character. It's, again, what does that have to do with you, how other people are enjoying themselves and spending their time? But, like, Stacey Henley is clearly has mental problems and i'm not even talking about the trans thing i'm talking about this idea that it's important that men create characters that don't go past a certain acceptable level of attractiveness for stacy henley all right let's see if gorilla really wanted to make a woke statement with Eloy, they did it could have they did We've seen both Julia Roberts and Rachel McAdams sport unshaven pits on the red carpet as a feminist statement, while Emily Ratajkowski and Molly Cyrus have both embraced hairy legs. Both of these are far more noticeable and far more of a statement than peach fudge. The thing is, nobody owns Julia Roberts and Rachel McAdams and Emily R. and Molly Cyrus. Ratajkowski. They don't own these women. It's not like these are not like just entertainment. They're just regular women out in, in the world doing their thing. Like, you could complain about it. But we're not modding these women. So to compare real life women with you, I bought a game that's supposed to be entertaining with a female character that should be attractive and you're doing stupid shit like putting peach fuzz. Hey, like I'm not impressed with that. You know, they did all of that to make these games technically amazing. But the stories are empty and hollow. The characters are not only unattractive, but boring and lame. And we've got goofballs like Stacey Henley complaining that we're complaining. Now, let's see. Da, 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 da. Okay, but all that matters is that digital women are practically perfect in every way, or else it's impossible to care about them. Again, even if that's the case, it has nothing to do with Stacey Henley. It has nothing to do with any woman. These are, just like this goofball is saying, digital women. Like, they do this thing where they pretend that the way a gamer plays a video game somehow has an effect on how they treat women or how they interact with women in the real world. When again, they call gamers incels. If you complain about an unattractive women in video games, they call you an incel. If you're an incel, you have no impact in society with women in the real world. So why do you care what they're doing in there? You should be happy that they're spending their time modding video games instead of lashing out and freaking out like some incels have done in the past. You know, they've leveled up. They leveled up. All right. The Last of Us Part Two is an interesting case study here as well. No, it's not. 
Many had objections to Abby's unrealistic body, putting it in quotes, despite the fact that she was modeled off an actual female athlete, one who lives in today's society and not in a fucking apocalypse when they're not allowed or they don't, they don't have access to gear and all kinds of supplements and the kind of food that you would need to maintain that. And also, she's somebody who's supposed to be a soldier, Abby. She's not going to have time to work out that much in between patrols and all the stupid soap opera shit she was going through. Others, meanwhile, complained that the game had deliberately made Ellie less attractive in the sequel. They did. Even though she was a young teenage child in the original outing. Henley is doing this Weasley thing here by saying that if you say Ellie was cute as a 14-year-old, you were saying that she's sexually attractive. As opposed to just saying, hey, you know, Ellie was a cute kid. She's not going to grow up, you know, to be 17, 18 and be... And look like how she looks in The Last of Us Part 2. Like, she's based on, clearly based on Ellen Page. So Ellen Page, when Ellen Page became like 17, 18 years old, she looked like Ellen Page still. Now, I've seen Ellen Page since she was younger when she was in um, Trailer Park Boys. So I know how she looked before she was 17. I mean, now she's totally, a, a, you know, a different person, but... When she was Ellen Page, when she was like 14, she looked like Ellie. And then when she became 17, 18, however old she was in Hard Candy, she still looked like Ellen Page. So they completely changed Ellie. Ellie was completely unattractive, everything. So I know you could argue here. No, sorry. I know you could argue there's a double standard afoot. There are many mods across many different games that make men shirtless. We also tend to celebrate when a mod makes a character available for a queer romance, but criticize when a mod changes a queer character to make them available for a straight romance. See Judy Alvarez's Cyber, Cyberpunk 2077. Again, this is what I mean when I know Stacey Henley is aware of how full of shit Stacey Henley is, but just they, they just still press on anyway. They try to act like they're being reasonable, like the, um, I'm going to say Final Fantasy, the Street Fighter VI article about Cammy, where it's like, I shouldn't care about this. I don't care about this, but I'm write a whole article complaining about it. But anyway, so this thing is, yes, there is a double standard, but the double standard isn't even the worst part of it. Just worrying about it at all is the issue. Caring about what gamers do and the privacy of their own home with fictional digital female characters and worrying about them having a deeper relationship and bond with these characters you know, by and not worry about how attractive they actually are is fucking stupid. It's childish. And this shit is taken seriously by the media. You know, like, again, Aeneas Sarkeesian got all this money making a whole series complaining about Catwoman's ass and how she switches her hips. And, like, they treated this like this was some, like, a crisis in society. Men like attractive fictional women characters, they treat women like commodities. I'm not treating women like anything. Again, if you think that we're incels, then it doesn't matter how we think of women because we're not getting with them. So this idea that, oh, it's just harming women in real life is just fucking foolish, especially since feminists, once again, I'm going to say it again, feminists say they don't need men for anything. So they absolutely shouldn't care what they like or don't like because it won't impact them at all. Ultimately, it's a matter of context. Oh, fuck off. If a mod is made to celebrate the character, then I consider it fair game. No. These bots are not to, to celebrate the character. It's to, it's to satisfy your particular kink, not to celebrate the character. They, again, they're just so full of shit. Stacey Henley is so disingenuous. If a mod is made to celebrate the character, then I consider it fair game. Fuck off. There are plenty of mods that dress characters up in outfits they only wear in particular scenes. For example, both Aloy and Lara Croft have mods that put them in more stylish outfits and in makeup. But these feel like these, they're in support of the character rather than objectifying them. No, it doesn't. You just... Don't like it when they're trying to make them prettier as opposed to them putting them in different outfits and giving them makeup. You're just so full of shit. Looking at Shadowheart and deciding she's not quite good enough for you is very different. Doesn't matter. Again, it doesn't have anything to do with you. It's like, and it's so embarrassing to even write this article because you know Stacey Henley is trans. So you're just picturing this guy sitting there in a wig and makeup and this dress talking about, damn, Shadowheart already looks like a supermodel. Don't you think... That that's good enough? Isn't that good enough for you? Like, what what does that say about me? It shouldn't say anything about you. It has nothing to do with you. Straight men are not ever going to be interested in a trans woman, so get over it. The weighting of these mods 
the ones that take a man's shirt off to the ones that contort a woman's clothes and body and face in any and all directions is also heavily out of sync, with far fewer shirtless men to be found. I've always taken the view that modern characters in video games should be like fan fiction. Extra lore, extra quests, extra scenes, extra costumes. But to write fan fiction, you need to be a fan. If you're changing Shadowheart because her skin isn't quite clear enough for you to be interested in her story, why are you even playing in the first place? Again, this is just so full of like ironies, this article. It's abs- absurd that someone who doesn't care about games and just using games as an excuse to complain about men is telling men who are playing the games, putting the time and effort to mod certain features to improve it for the, you know, the experience for themselves, like quality of life improvements, you're saying they're not a fan. This, the funniest thing to me are people who are like, they appropriate the culture, and then they tell you, the actual fan, that you're not the fan. You know, like uh, Saints Row, Volition did that, that the community manager was saying, you're not fans. Um, I forgot, there was another company where the guy was saying, anybody who complains about, I think it was uh, um, Mortal Kombat, anybody who complains about the attractiveness of the women characters, they're not actual fans. But anyway, that's the article. Um, another banger by Stacey Henley. Gaming uh, publishers and developers need to take a step back, especially the males. You know, the men at these companies need to take a step back and actually pay attention to what you know, trans women and feminists are complaining about when they complain about sexy women, uh, objectification, and sexualizing uh, female characters. They do it to the men and animals all the time. They just don't want straight men enjoying straight women. And when someone complains about the fact that a player's reaction to a digital female is only skin deep, you have to stop and realize that this isn't a real complaint. And it's not the concern of the complainer. It's fine for Stacey Hanley if they want to write these stupid articles so they can get, you know, traffic to their website. But taking it seriously and thinking that you actually may need to make ugly women to teach men some kind of lesson about, you know, not treating women as commodities, even though this is entertainment in a fictional space. In a lot of ways, I don't want to get into it too much right now. I feel like fictional women in male entertainment should almost be looked at as sex workers in a way, you know, not necessarily prostitutes, but like strippers or like, you know, um, girls in lewd, like dressing lewd or whatever, you know, somebody at a Hooters or something, you know, power girl dresses like that because it's attractive to men. That's why it's not about realism. It's not about what's practical. It's not about what a woman in real life would do. These are not real women. These are fictional women. And even if a real woman was playing a superheroine in a movie, it should not be an issue. Like, don't hire someone who's going to be super modest and super concerned about being sexualized. That's part of the entertainment. This is not a bug. It's a feature. And it's not a problem when they do it to Leon. You know, when these weirdos do it to Leon and sexualize him constantly or Nightwing, no one complains. But when they do it to sh- when the straight man says, I want to make this character look even better for whatever reason, then they have to make this a moral issue and, and they're worried about how you relate to it. On the one hand, they don't like parasocial relationships. On the other, they want men to think about a, fi- a fictional character as if she was a living, breathing woman in the real world. Did you bring the schedule? Let me see. 